For decades, NASA aircraft have flown around the globe, collecting atmospheric and terrestrial data to aid in the study of Earth's ecosystems. Many of these missions were flown on NASA aircraft, such as the high-flying ER-2 or the WB-57. In the 1990s, in an effort to streamline science instrument integration into these high-flying aircraft, NASA began designing a standardized power and control interface. Dubbed the Experimenter Interface Panel, this new hardware interface allowed researchers to design instruments to a single interconnect specification and gave pilots the ability to turn instruments on and off during flight. Well, the, the original EIP, and it's only called Mark 1 now, because there's been more versions since then, uh, flew for over 20 years on the ER-2s and the WB-57s. And it was simply the connection between instruments to the airplane. It's where they would get power and signals from the uh, avionics on the airplane. It was basically a box of wires and relays. In 2008, NASA expanded its airborne science fleet with the addition of the Global Hawk UAV. While extremely capable, the new aircraft provided a number of challenges in trying to integrate it into NASA's airborne science program. The Global Hawk project appeared and there was a need to uh, outfit it for you know, airborne science operations, the whole payload infrastructure. From the Air Force, it came with essentially nothing but what it takes to fly the airplane. No power control, no communications, no payload SATCOM. It's all there to, to, to fly the airplane, but, but nothing for the payload. So we're basically starting from scratch. We had to invent the, uh, the wiring plan, the network, the communication protocols, the uh, experiment interface panels, of course, master payload control system to switch power to the instruments and keep them safe with the interlocks. We had to invent the communication to the ground uh, over Iridium initially, which is only 2400 bits per second per modem. And also we had to create the whole ground infrastructure as well. But also outside there, uh, data goes to the internet and to web services and applications out on the internet as well. So basically we had to invent all that stuff. In short, NASA needed to develop an entire airborne sensor network in order to enable science operations for the Global Hawk. Development of this new sensor network fell to engineers at the University Affiliated Research Center, or UARC. Working in close collaboration with the Airborne Sensor Facility at NASA's Ames Research Center, UARC engineers began developing an entire suite of hardware and software capabilities to enable remote science operations on the Global Hawk, including the Mark II Experimenter Interface Panel. The Mark II was basically a uh, newer version of the Mark I with a embedded microcontroller to be able to uh, send data over Ethernet to the sensor network uh, regarding uh, power, switch positions, uh, volts and amps, that sort of thing, temperatures. And so it got the EIP onto the sensor network so we were able to do, have better engineering data in real time. Getting all of Global Hawk's science instruments onto an Ethernet network was one of many steps required to enable remote science operations. Another was the development of a centralized command, control, and communication system to gather science instrument and operational data from the aircraft and deliver it to ground operations. Two devices are central to this the master payload control system, which allows the mission director to monitor the current state of payload operations on board the aircraft, and the NASDAT, short for NASA Airborne Science Data Acquisition and Telemetry System, the NASDAT provides the basic capabilities to turn any aircraft into an airborne science platform. What it does is collect all the data on the airplane uh, record the file, redistribute it around the airplane, but also send all that stuff to the ground in a very efficient manner, which is hard to do with only 9,600 baud that's intermittent. But still it's enough, and it gives us the baseline capability. 
Uh, it's got very sophisticated software architecture. It's self-configuring based on XML files. It's also self-verifying and self-documenting. Uh, there's a lot of research on that sort of thing going on in the world these days. I think we were fairly well out ahead of it. In 2010, Global Hawk and its new airborne sensor network saw its first science flights during the GLOPAC environmental science mission. With 11 instruments on board, the Global Hawk set new records for flight duration and distance, logging several flights over 30 hours, each of which covered over 11,000 nautical miles. Using the new capabilities of this airborne sensor network, researchers were able to monitor and control instruments on board Global Hawk from Mission Control at NASA's Armstrong Flight Research Center in Mojave, California. Building upon the success of Global Hawk's Mark II Experimenter Interface Panel and its new sensor network, NASA and UARC engineers began working on a successor to the Mark II, which would further refine the Experimenter Interface Panel. The Mark III was an upgrade to the Mark II to make it easier to build, basically. It's very hard to put all those wires <laughs> into a little box. And so what Josh Forgione, the designer of the Mark III, did was he engineered a way to build it onto monolithic large circuit cards, which basically just plug together in layers. But more and more we want to move everything towards Ethernet, and the Mark III AIPs helped that along. Speaking of Ethernet, they have the Ethernet switch built in, uh, as opposed to being a big separate box like it is on uh, AV6 Glowlock. Um, so it's really quite an accomplishment to fit all that in. And one other nice thing on the Mark III AAPs is they use solid state power controllers instead of old fashioned relays, which means they can check for trips and arc faults and report status back on that, back to the ground in real time. Over the past decade, UARC engineers have worked in close collaboration with NASA to create technologies and systems that have expanded the agency's Earth science data collection capabilities across a variety of airborne platforms, giving researchers access to a breadth of new data that is helping us better understand our ever-changing and dynamic planet.